Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Maruti, and I'm back with another learning topic. And the topic for the today is prompt engineering. As you know, every day we are learning new things in Azure Cloud and AI related stuff. And the prompt engineering is one of that topic which you need to learn if you want to utilize maximum from generative AI. Now, we are going to talk about prompt engineering right now. So basically, the first question is, what is prompt engineering? Now, if you want to understand prompt engineering, you need to understand the word prompt. I think in my previous videos, I have explained this, but let me give you a quick recap. Whenever you provide some input in the chat box of your chat GPT or any other chat model, when you provide the input text, or maybe you're going to provide that with the help of a speech, that input text is actually something which is known as prompt. So basically, whatever you are sending to the chat GPT model, that is something which is known as prompt. And then this prompt is going to be processed by the LLM, large language models, and then they are going to give you the response. That response or whatever answer you're getting from them, that is known as completion. So basically, it's not a request and response. It is a prompt and completion, which is a technical term which you need to understand. Now, whatever you're going to send in that prompt, when you improvise that, you will get better results. And that's why you need to understand certain techniques of prompt engineering. And that's exactly what we are going to learn today. So what is prompt engineering? The answer of that is, it's going to help you to constructing prompts to maximize relevancy and accuracy for completions. Again, do not forget the words prompt and completion. It's going to specify formatting and styles of completion. It's going to help you to provide conversational context so that you can better explain to the LLM that what kind of an answer you're expecting from them. It's going to help you to mitigate bias and improve fairness, which are obviously the two responsible rules of responsible AI. Now, without wasting time, let's get started with our Azure AI Foundry portal. We are going to do some of the initial stuff which are common, but then we are going to focus on prompt engineering techniques today. Okay, now as you can see, I have logged into my ai.azure.com, basically my Azure AI Foundry portal. And the first thing as usual we are going to do is, we will create a new project. So I'm going to create a new project which will be created with the separate hub. My project name, I'm just specifying Maruti with something like uh, AI Proj. And uh, in the customize section, I just want to change one thing that the location of this is not going to be East US 2, it's going to be East US. So I'm choosing East US as my location. I have this uh, particular hub name also, which is Maruti hub with some number. So I'm just specifying this kind of a name. And uh, I think everything else is fine. I'm okay with all this configuration. I'm going to click on next and I'm going to click on create. Now, while this deployment process is going on, let me remind you one thing that if you are using your Azure subscription, make sure after completion of all the practical labs, you delete the resources. Those resources which are created in your Azure portal will cost you almost every minute. So it's advisable when you are not going to use this thing, you have to delete it. Also, let me remind you that if you're liking our videos, please press the like button and subscribe to our channel. Also, feel free to share this thing with your friends. If they are interested in AI, if you think that this videos will be important or useful for them, feel free to share it with others. And if you want to learn something new in AI and you, you want to request those topics to us, please put that particular topic in the comment box. We will surely try to record a separate video on your favorite topic. Okay, so project creation is done. And which means that the next thing we are going to do is we are going to choose our specific model from the model catalog. Remember for this particular demo today, I am going to use GPT model, but you can actually try these techniques with whichever model you like. In this particular search section, I'm going to search for GPT 35. If I'm going to put this thing, I'm going to get GPT 35 Turbo 16K, GPT 35 Turbo Instruct. There are so many versions are also available here. I'm going to choose right now GPT 35 Turbo, which is this one. Now remember, Whenever we choose the model so far in all this configuration, we always deploy the model first. And then once you deploy the model, you will get something called playground where you can actually try all the prompts in that. And that's exactly what we will do today also. I will click on deploy. It's showing me an optional configuration here. Now I want to change one thing. That is, I do not want to go with the 100K tokens per minute. I do not need this much. 
So I'm going to scale it down to 5,000 tokens per minute. I think this is perfect for me. Everything else is fine. I'm going to click on deploy. This is, remember, this is connected with my AI resource, which is my open AI service. This is the only connection which I have as of now with the East US region location. I'm going to click on deploy and this will take, I think, maximum one minute to deploy this deployment. Now, remember, once this deployment is done, all we are going to do right now is open in playground and we are going to try this prompt, which I'm going to show you. If you're a developer and if you want to use this deployed model, you actually have to use the endpoint and the key which is associated with that. And then in your own application also, which is maybe developed in Java, .NET, JavaScript, Python, whichever language you prefer, you can actually use this endpoint and the key for all the prompt configurations with that. As of now, let me click on open in playground. This is going to give me a playground where I can try my prompt engineering techniques. The first prompt, which I always try is, because this is a GPT based prompt, and left side we have an AI assistant kind of a system message, I always try this thing first that, what can you do? So basically this is going to show me that what my assistant can do in this case, because this is an AI assistant right now. Now, in my other videos, I have shown you that how you can customize system message and using that how you can uh, generate different kind of a content based on this. Right now, it's just showing me I can help you with find information on a wide range of topics, answer questions, provide explanations, offer suggestions and assist you with the various tasks. Just let me know what you need help with. Now, this is fine. Let me give you the first prompt engineering technique. The first prompt engineering technique is direct language. Yes. Whatever you want to ask, just put it directly in the specific language and then it's going to give you the response of that. Let's say I am going to put a prompt which is this. Create a list of 10 things to do in Edinburgh during August. Now I'm directly specifying a location, a time which is associated with this and then I'm asking that how many things I'm expecting actually, which is 10. So this is like a direct language. You're specifically saying this is exactly what I want. When I do this, it's showing me a list of the things. So it's going to show me attend Edinburgh Festival Fringe, the world's largest art festival. Then second thing is there. Then third thing is there. And totally they are going to show me 10 things because that's what I have asked for. So basically, remember one thing, direct language means you exactly ask what you want. If you ask for it, you'll get it. That's step number one. Now let's go to the second step in which we have to understand that we have to provide clear instructions. So when you want very specific thing, you have to provide a clear instructions. Like for example, let me show you one prompt. I am specifying a prompt which is saying write a product description for a new water bottle. Now I am not specifying what kind of a water bottle is this. But I'm just saying I want a product description for a new water bottle. When I mention this prompt, it's going to generate the completion. It's going to give me the response of that. And you can see it's actually using some five, six lines of description in this. It's saying introducing the Hydroflow insulated water bottle. The perfect companion for staying hydrated on the go. The sleek and stylish water bottle is designed with the double wall, vacuum insulated stainless steel construction. Now, this is something which is very generalized information which they have generated because only thing which I have mentioned in my prompt is a new water bottle. And if I want to be very specific, as I said, step number two is provide clear instructions. Now, what I mean by that, instead of this prompt, I will use this one, which is actually saying write a product description for a new water bottle that is 100% recycled. Be sure to include that it comes in natural colors with no dyes and each purchase is going to remove 10 pounds of plastic from our oceans. So I'm actually specifying the intention behind this bottle. I'm specifying that it is not coming with some kind of a dye. It's actually having all the natural colors with that. So I'm actually adding some more details and this is why I am saying that you have to provide clear instructions what exactly you want. Now, when I'm going to submit this prompt, let me tell you the cost of the prompt and completion is going to be calculated based on the tokens. When I'm doing this thing, compared to the first prompt, this one is going to give me a better result. It's going to give me a better completion. 
even though it's going to show me a similar amount of text or it's going to use similar amount of tokens, cost is going to be same, but the result is going to be much more improvised. This time, if you see, it is actually focusing on all those points which I see. So it's saying that introducing EcoWave Recycle Water Bottle and a sustainable choice for eco-conscious individuals who wants to make positive impact on the planet. This innovative water bottle is made from 100% recycled material, helping you to reduce the waste to protect environment. All those things which I have asked for is actually mentioned inside this. It's also showing me that this is a recycled bottle, which is going to be part of a movement towards more sustainable future. Make a statement with your hydration choice and show your commitment to protecting our oceans and the environment. So basically, uh, this is like a more improvised completion we are getting with the help of better prompt. I hope you understood first two step direct language and provide clear instructions now let's move forward to the third one which is requesting output composition sometimes we do not want an output with this kind of multiple lines paragraphs we actually want a specific format at that time step number three is going to be important i am adding a new prompt now i'm saying that write a table in markdown with six animals in it with their genus and species now this time this is like I am giving you an example of requesting output composition, which means that I am exactly specifying what kind of a format and what kind of a data I'm looking for. If I send this prompt, because I'm saying write a table, it's not going to give me paragraphs, it's going to give me a table and that also in Markdown. I hope you know Markdown is a specific extension association with that. It's showing me, sure, here is a table in Markdown format with six animals along with their genus and species. They are giving me animals, genus, species. So we have lion, elephant, tiger, giraffe, penguin, and dolphin. And they are showing me the genus and species associated with that. Cool. This is giving me a table kind of a format now. So this was step number three, requesting output composition. You can also specify that I want to generate an email or I want to write a newsletter. You can specify different kind of formats and what exactly you're looking for. And it's going to generate completion based on that. Now, the fourth one, which I'm going to show you right now, is known as chain of thought. This is one of the very important prompt engineering technique when you have some complex completion to generate. Uh, basically, in chain of thought, you are going to mention to the model that I want you to explain step by step process. So you actually ask a model to break down its responses and then explain its reasoning with that. Let's see how chain of thought works. I'm providing a prompt now asking this what spot is easiest to learn but hardest to master so i'm asking a question and then i'm saying give a step-by-step -step approach of your thoughts ending in your answer i'm going to send this prompt let's wait for the completion to be generated the question is straightforward what spot is easiest to learn but hardest to master but this time i want to see the thought process i want to see what kind of response I'm getting, and then what kind of reasoning they are giving me for that. Now, you can see right now, they are showing me there are various opinions on this, but one spot that is often considered easy to learn but difficult to master is golf. Here is a step-by-step -step approach to explain why golf is, fits this description. Now, it's showing me learning the basics. Golf is relatively easy to learn of basics, hitting a stationary ball with a club towards the target, in the whole so this is something which is easy then they are saying understanding techniques mental game consistency and precision is required which can actually take years to master that course management mastering the intricacies of different courses understanding how to navigate hazard all these things are important skills of a golfer and then continuous improvement is obviously required now the answer they are saying is golf they are saying that while the basics of golf can be learned relatively quickly Achieving mastery in the sport, including consistent performance, mental toughness, strategic thinking, and precise execution is a challenging and ongoing process. Now, maybe if I just add on one more thing in this, that which one sport is easiest to learn, hardest to master, and not very expensive, because we know golf is an expensive sport. Now, maybe for that, if I say that I want to look for something which is fitting in my budget, then maybe it's going to give me another sport and then it's going to give me the reasoning associated with that. And that's what chain of thought is actually doing. Now, because we are using natural language right now, let me show you some more prompt engineering techniques where now next we are going to see is how can we generate 
code, programming language code with the help of natural language text. Now let's say I am going to put a prompt like this, write a function for binary search in Python. So this is going to generate a Python code for the binary search function. Now when I do this thing, remember your completion is always based on the system message. This is a normal AI assistant right now. So this is not the expert of writing a Python logic right now. But still I'm saying that write a function for binary search kind of a thing in the Python. And this is showing me a Python logic here. So you can see a binary search function is created with two parameters. It's giving me the step-by-step -step logical code. It's also giving me some example usage of this function if I want to invoke this function. Now, this is fine. This is working fine. And it's generating a code also for me. And suppose if I do not understand this function, I can also mention, can you explain about function step by step so maybe i'm not an expert of python and i want to understand what exactly they are doing in this function logic and i want them to explain this thing step by step that can be also generated easily with your model as you can see i got a step by step explanation of the binary search function in python they are showing me seven to eight different steps in that and then in each step what they are doing is what they are explaining inside that now sometimes you do not need to specifically say that what exactly you want to do in that particular code but you want to generate it for example i'm trying one more prompt here in this prompt i'm saying complete the following function basically i have an incomplete code and i want my model to complete my code in this case i'm just specifying complete the following function i am using something like commented lines calculate the average of the numbers and in an array but only if they are even. Now, this is not a logic. This is just a comment in Python, which is denoted with the help of hash. And then I'm just defining a function with the keyword def. And then obviously I'm not creating any function right now. I just want my model to complete my logical code. So what logic I want to write, I'm just putting that in the comment. And then I'm saying, Can you please complete this particular code. And if I do this thing, that will understand the comment, which I have added in that particular function and it will generate a logical code for that. So not only you can ask for a specific function name, you can also have an, this kind of a commented lines and it's going to complete your logical function with that. I did this prompt. If I scroll down, you can see it's showing me a def calculate even average. It's showing me the total and count kind of a two variables. It's calculating the number in an array. So exactly as per the commented message which I've given, they're trying to complete that function and they're also giving me an example usage how exactly I can call this. This are some of the useful techniques of prompt engineering, which most of the people should know. Now, obviously, this is an endless process, but I hope with this particular video, you understood that what is a prompt engineering. Now, there are so many tools in which you can try this thing. If you are interested in trying some of the tools which are actually giving you prompt engineering kind of uh, techniques and then it's also allowing you to not only generating code or a textual thing, there are a couple of tools available which will actually help you to generate images with the help of a proper prompt. If you are interested in those things, just comment down that in this particular video and we will share a list of the useful and free tools which are helping you to generate images and code and natural language text with the help of prompt engineering techniques. That's it for now. I'll see you tomorrow, guys. Signing off. Bye-bye.